10,000 hours of practice before you become a master. This is something that is said quite often to students and people who want to master a subject. The same is true for cybersecurity. But where do you practice? If you practice out in the real world, you're bound to get into legal issues. But fear not, we have a solution. We can build our own cyber range. A cyber range is a training environment that allows us to practice and develop our skills in a safe and secure manner. They are simulated platforms that can replicate networks, systems, tools and applications like we might find out there in the real world. Cyber ranges can be made from actual hardware and software. It can be a combination of virtual and physical components. What is most common though is to start off with a virtual environment. When using a virtual environment, we can use software like VirtualBox, VMware or QEMU to virtualize operating systems on our own system. There are many reasons we want to get a cyber range. The main reason is that education and training models fall short in addressing the cybersecurity skill gap. Hands-on experience is pretty much required to advance. If you're an employer, it allows you to assess and track training and performance of your professionals. In this video, we will look into setting up a virtual machine cluster that is both cheap to run and cheap to buy, so that you, as an aspiring cybersecurity professional, can train your skills or create environments that allows you to test the tasks that you want to perform on your clients. Since we're looking at this from a starter or hobbyist perspective, we have to keep in mind that we don't want to break the bank. To accomplish this, we're going to look at using older hardware that we can find on eBay or at stores that sell refurbished gear. We're going to stay away from old servers. While we can find these cheaply online, the downsides such as noise and power consumption outweigh the upsides. These things might not be an issue in a data center, but they become a big issue if you want to run them in your bedroom or in your house. The last thing you want is to get huge power bills and go mad because of the noise they make. So we have to look at a different solution. In comes a 1 liter PC. Designed to be run in mass in an office environment, they are quiet, power efficient and the most important part for us, cheap. If you have some old PCs, you can also use these for your cyber range. I hear you think now, but they aren't as powerful as a server or a desktop. Don't worry. With the way we are building our cyber range, you will see that our big limitations will be the RAM that our mini PCs contain. Even if the system doesn't come with a ton of RAM, we can easily replace them relatively cheaply. Just make sure you factor in those costs when buying them. PCs? Yes, plural. We are going to get multiple of these machines that we will set up in a cluster, so that resources can be shared between them and, if configured correctly, will even be able to do failover in case one of the machines goes down. We have bought two of these machines, each containing 6 cores, 16 gig of RAM and 256 gig of NVMe storage. This has cost us under 300 US dollars. We are going to run Proxmox on the machines. This operating system allows us to easily install, configure, run and remove virtual machines. Proxmox allows us to cluster machines together to create a larger environment. With Proxmox, we don't even need to have similar machines. As long as the CPU supports either Intel VT or AMD V. We can download Proxmox from Proxmox.com. After flashing the ISO on a USB drive with Balana Etcher or if you're using Linux with DD, we can install it on our machines. Be aware, since these machines are made for corporate use, that they often have security features turned on by default. This means we need to go into the BIOS and disable these, else the machines won't boot from USB. When installing the machines, it's important to know that the host name and IP address that we've selected are pretty much fixed addresses. While we can still change it after installation, it's such a pain that it's easier to reinstall Proxmox instead. Once we got our machines installed with Proxmox, we can configure them. To configure them, we open a browser and go to the IP or host name on port 8006. This will bring up the Proxmox interface. While this seems very daunting at first, 
the people at Proxmox have good documentation on what every function does. Since the machines are not just separate machines, the first thing we want to do is set them up so they act as a cluster. To create a cluster, Proxmox recommends using three devices. This is because of Quorum. Quorum means that within the cluster, the Proxmox machines vote on what to do, and with two machines, it's always a draw. To prevent this, we can create a special node that can function as an extra vote, so that the cluster doesn't die when one of the machines goes down because of voting issues within the cluster. Once we have our machine set up that need to join the cluster, on the first machine, we click on the data center button on the left side. On the menu that pops up, we click on create cluster. There we define a cluster name and select the network connection that we want to use. Most of the time, the default network will suffice. We have to keep in mind though, that the core sync process needs to have a latency less than five milliseconds. This means that we don't want to do any live migrations or access storage over this network. To deal with this issue, we can set up a secondary NIC. Now that we've created a cluster with a single node, it's time to add other nodes to it. To do this, first we have to get the join information from the cluster we just created. To obtain this information, we can click on the join information button in the cluster menu. We copy the large string that is in there. If you can tell me how this string is encoded, tell me in the comments. It should be an easy one for web application testers. Now that we've copied the string, we go over to the control panel of the Proxmox machine we want to join to the cluster. There we go to the same menu, data center, cluster, but instead of selecting create, we click the join cluster button. A form will pop up with several fields. We can paste the string we've copied earlier in there. This will automatically populate the other fields. After we click on OK, we can see that the other nodes of the cluster become visible in the menu on the left side. We now have a basic cluster running. Time to set up our cyber range. The first thing we want to set up in our cyber range is a new network. We want to create two zones that simulate a corporate network and one zone that is secluded from all networks. The secluded zone we will use for malware research. The first thing we will set up is the simplest, the malware zone. In this section of the network, we want to be able to analyze malware. To do this, we need to segment the network so our local network is protected from whatever scary things we want to run inside the zone. We also want to limit the internet access so that nothing is able to reach out and possibly phone home. After that, we're going to configure our basic corporate network. For this, we're going to set up two networks, one DMZ and one internal corporate network. Let's focus on the network for malware research first. To set up a network, we select Data Center and then we scroll down in the menu and select SDN, which stands for Software Defined Networking. In this menu, we can create virtual networks. The first thing we have to create is a zone. When we click on the Create button, we can see several types. Since we want it isolated from the rest of the network, we select VXLAN. This creates a tunnel on top of the network that exists between our nodes. In the menu that pops up, we have to fill in two required fields, the ID and the peer address list. The ID can be a name with up to eight characters and the peer address list are the IPs of the nodes that we want to use in our VXNet. Let's create a name like Melnet and use the IPs of our Proxmox nodes that we have created. When we click Add, we see it appear in the list. Once we have created our VXNet, we go back to the SDN menu and click the Apply button. This will propagate the networks across all the nodes in our Proxmox cluster. Now that we have our zone, we can go on assigning a subnet to our zone. To assign a subnet to our newly created zone, we navigate to the VNet section. There we click the Create button and create a VNet for the Melnet zone. The menu only requires two items, the name and the zone that is used. We can also assign a tag. This tags the VLAN. Let's set this tag to something like 
10,000. These tag numbers are so high that they aren't usually supported in real network gear. Now that we've created the VNet inside the VXLAN, we can assign a subnet to our VNet. If we highlight our created VNet, we see on the right side that we're able to create a subnet. When we click the Create button, we only need to add a gateway and an IP range in SIDR format. The gateway is usually the first IP in the SIDR IP range we've made. This also seems the place to add a DHCP provider by setting an IP range. But be aware that the free version of Proxmox does not yet support this function. Now that we added the subnet, we go back to the SDN and click the Apply button. This will again propagate the settings throughout our cluster. Now, each of the nodes of the Proxmox cluster should have the network that we created available as a selection during the creation of our virtual machines. Now that we've created our isolated malware zone, we can set up our fake corporate network. Like we said earlier, we will create two zones. One will be named CorpLan and the other will be named CorpDMZ. We will follow the same steps as the isolated malware zone we created earlier. Let's set up some virtual machines. The first virtual machine that we want to set up is a firewall for the corporate network. For this, we will download PFSense. We can download the PFSense ISO from the PFSense website. PFSense is an open source firewall that is very versatile. Once we've downloaded the ISO, we need to transfer it to the node that we want to install PFSense on. To do this, we click on the local storage of the node. When we click on it, we can see that we can either upload the ISO image directly from our system to the node, or we can have Proxmox download the ISO from the internet itself. Once we've uploaded the ISO to the node, we can create a VM. To do this, we can click the Create VM button in the top right. This brings up a pop-up where we can select the node that we want to run it on. Select the node where you uploaded the ISO image from PFSense. We can then select a name for the VM. Let's name it Corporate Firewall. We can then click the Next button. In the next section, we can select the ISO image from the drop-down menu. If you don't see the image, ensure you have the correct Proxmox node selected or have the ISO image uploaded to the node. Once we select the PFSense, we can click the Next button. In the system menu, we want to enable QEMO agent. This will install a QEMO agent in the VM. While this does nothing in PFSense, it's important to select this option when installing Linux or Windows operating systems. So it's a good thing to make a habit out of enabling it. The QEMO agent will allow us to send commands such as shutdown and reboot commands directly through a Proxmox GUI. After clicking the next button, we can now change the storage location and the disk size. We advise to make the disk size not too large for most of your VMs. If the VM only requires 2GB to run, do not make it a 32GB. Since Proxmox will reserve the 32GB for your drive and it's easy to run out of storage that way. For PFSense, we'll set it to 3GB because that should be enough to run it. In the next window, we can select how many sockets and cores we want to assign to the VM. The same with the storage, don't give it too many CPUs because you will limit yourself in how many VMs you can run efficiently. The following section is the memory section. It allows us to sign memory. In this VM, we only need 1GB, so we set it to 1024, which is 1GB of RAM. Similar to storage, memory is reserved by a VM when it's running. This means, once you run out, you can't start any more VMs. The last setting we need to make is selecting our network. We want to set it to the CorpNet network. We will add the other networks to the VM before booting it for the first time. The final screen of creating a VM is a screen where we can see all the settings that we've just made. 
When we click the finish button, we can see that the VM we've just created is waiting in our node for us to start. Now it's time to add the other networks to the PFSAMS VM. We can do this by clicking on the VM name in the left menu. This will display the features of the VM. If we then select the hardware section, we can add extra hardware to the VM. We want to add two extra network cards to the VM. Since we already added the corporate network, we want to add the DMZ and the normal network. Once we added them all, we are ready to start our VM. To start our VM, we can click the start button in the top right. When we click on the console button, we can see the monitor of our VM. From here, we install PFSense. We can simply click quickly through the installation menu to install it. After we've installed PFSense, the VM restarts and we can configure PFSense to function as a firewall in our corporate network. The first thing we do in the configuration is select the WAN interface. We set the public network bridge as our interface. We can see which one of the interfaces we need to select based on the list in the hardware section of the VM. We then add the other interfaces we've added to PFSense. After we edit them, we need to configure them to the IP ranges that we have set within Proxmox. Once we have configured this, we have a basic network running. The next step is to configure the DMZ address to actually be a DMZ. To do this, we need to log into the PFSense interface and configure the DMZ. We now have a skeleton configured of our corporate network. This is where we leave it for now. We have a base corporate network in our cyber range, but without any machines installed inside of it. If you want us to make a next video about setting up virtual machines inside the corporate network or malware network and how to configure them, Leave a like, a comment about what you like us to build in CyberAge, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and hack ethically.